Okay, so in this problem, we're told three forces are applied to a tree sapling, as shown in the figure, to stabilize it. If FA equals 385 newtons and FB equals 475 newtons, find FC in magnitude and direction. So the first thing you always want to do is draw what's going on. So they're given a figure here with three forces, FA, FB, and FC. And so uh, we're given the values of two of these. We're given FA is going to be equal to... 385 newtons and FB is equal to 475 newtons. And then what they want us to find here is this value uh, FC, right? So we're going to find the magnitude of FC and the uh, direction. So the first thing that I want to do is this problem, they draw it like this, but what we're going to do is draw it in terms of axes. So what I'm going to draw is to an axis here so one like this and then one like this and so the uh this is just going to represent uh this sapling here so if i redraw the forces acting on this axis right we have fa pointing in this direction and so i'm going to assume or just say that fa points along this x axis here now i can pick wherever it points but it should be pretty intuitive that this thing is pointing along the x axis right so we're going to draw that I know FB is going to point up somewhere around this way, uh, and the angle between them, uh, these two forces, FA and FB, are 105 degrees. So I know that this angle right here is 90 degrees, okay? And so I know it's 105 de uh, degrees between them. So I know that it's basically going to be about right here. So let's say this is FB, right? Because the distance or the angle between these two is 105, and then this is 90 which would make this about 15 degrees. So all I'm doing is just redrawing the force on this uh, graph here. And then we also have FC, which is going to point somewhere this direction. And we don't know where or how, but we know FC is going to point this way. And so what I'm going to do now is just rewrite what these values are, 385 newtons. Uh, and then I'm going to write up here 475 newtons. And so uh, that's what we know. And the way we're going to do this, or the way you solve for any vectors like this, so uh, the way you do it is by breaking it down in terms of its components. So the first thing we have to realize is they're saying the three forces shown uh, on the tree sapling, or sapling are applied in order to stabilize it. What does it mean if something's stabilized? Well, in, in my opinion, if something's stabilized, it's not moving, right? So that's how I interpret it. If something's not moving, then I know the sum of the forces are going to be equal to zero. Right, because if the sum of the forces are zero, it's not going to be moving in any direction at all. Therefore, it's stabilized. So I know all these forces acting on this object here, uh, the sum of the forces are going to be equal to zero. Okay, so I know the sum of the forces equals zero. And then uh, in order to solve for FC, right, we're going to sum the forces in both the x and y direction. Uh, when I say x, I'm referring to this way. Y, I'm going to be referring to this way. And so the reason we're doing that is if we can get both of the components here, uh, for FC, we can combine them to get the magnitude. But we can't just say, uh, add these up in the way they are. We have to align them in their directions uh, or else they will, uh, won't cancel. So hopefully that makes sense. But I know the sum of the forces in the X equals zero because it's stabilized. So now I need to figure out, okay, what are the different forces acting in the X here? So there's going to be uh, three, force, three forces. So you're going to have the X component of FA, the X component of FB, and the X component of FC, right? Because we're summing the forces in the X, and we need to get the X component of each of these forces. Now, the first thing to notice, or when you do this, if something's going to the right, you want to sum it positive. If it's to the left, it's negative. Uh, that's just a general rule I like to follow, and most people do as well. Uh, if it goes upwards, you also call it positive. If it goes downwards, I like to call it negative. And so, starting off with summing the forces in the X, what is the X component of this FA? Well, the first thing to notice is this FA is directly along the X axis. Uh, and then notice there's no component in the Y of it. Therefore, this FA is just uh, the same as the X component of FA. So really, uh, this force is just 385, right? The X component of FA. And when we sum these forces, we just add them up. So then we have plus. Now what we want to do is find the X component of FB. So if you imagine this right here, we have the Y component acting straight up like this, and then the X component is like this. So it kind of forms a triangle like that. And we want to find out what this X component is. So how do we do that? So I know this right here is the X component, 
And what I like to do is label X into my Y component Y. And so I know this angle right here is 15 degrees. And how do I know that? As I said before, this was 90 degrees. And then we know the total between these two is 115. Therefore, this is just 15 there. And so what we're going to do is use trig. So you should know that the sine of an angle, right, sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Well, we know the hypotenuse is just the magnitude of the force, 475. So the opposite is 475 over, uh, or sorry, it's x opposite over hypotenuse, which is 475, right? So Katoa. So if I want to solve for the x component of this, I would just multiply both sides by 475. And then I have our value x, right? The x component of this FB, which is what we wanted, right? Uh, because we're summing up the forces in the x. Another thing to notice, though, is this force right here, it's going to go up like this and then point to the left. Therefore, when I add these forces, it's going to be negative. So I'm going to have plus negative 475 sine of 15. And then the final force is we have to add f of c. So, right, so when we write this in, right, we're not actually going to be finding the x component. Now, because we're just going to write plus fc of x, right, because that's what we're trying to find, the x component of uh, f of c, because we don't know the angle here. So if we did this uh, the way we did these two, we wouldn't actually be able to solve for it. So that's why we're just writing as fc of x, because as I said before, we need to find the x and y components of this force f of c in order to get it so really f of c of x is going to be equal to i'm just going to move both of these to the other side 475 sine of 15 right and then we have uh minus 385 so let me go ahead and plug this in 475 sine of 15 minus 385 so it's going to be a negative number which is what we expect right because uh, it's pointing in the left here, so obviously it's going to be in the negative direction. But fc of x here is minus 262.06. So 262, we'll say 0.1 newtons. So your fc of x, or the x component of this, is uh, 261 point, or 262.1. 262 he might pointing to the left there. Uh, and the way this works is because we know all the forces in the x direction have to be equal to zero so if i add up all the forces it must be zero because it's not moving which allows us we only have one unknown here and i can get my x component of f of c so now we did it in uh, the x we're going to do the same thing in the y so some of the forces in the y equals zero because it's not moving right so keep in mind there's going to be no y component of f of a right as i said before it's only along this x here so we don't actually have to include that when we do it right so the y component of this f of a is essentially going to have to balance out or be equal to uh, the y component of this f of c. Right? Intuitively, you should know that since they're the only two forces uh, and they're pointing in opposite directions. So uh, we want to find the y component of f of b. Right. So as I said before, we're going to use trig. So we have this cosine of an angle this time. So looking back at our triangle, we want y. I know cosine is the adjacent of our angle, which is y, over the hypotenuse right, which is 475. So we have the cosine of 15 equals y over 475. Multiplying both sides, right, we get 475 cosine of 15 is our y value. So fb of y, right, is 475 cosine of 15, right? It's going upwards, therefore it's positive. And then to solve for the y component of f of c, we have to add that too. So plus f of c of y. Now, notice uh, to solve for f of c of y after adding these forces, right? Because these two added up are equal to zero since it's not moving. Moving this to the other side is minus 475 cosine of 15, right? It's going to be negative because it's pointing downwards. We know that, right? Because it has to cancel out the force pointing up. So minus 475 cosine of 15 is minus 458.81. Or we'll just say minus 458.8. Uh, and so keep in mind, this is going to be Newton since it's force. And so now what we have here is the X and Y component of our force. So we know in the X, it's going to be 262 point, uh, 262.1. And then downwards, it's going to be the Y. So 458.8. Keep in mind, the negative is just indicating the direction. So what we want is the magnitude here, which is this side of the line. Now, how do we get that? So you should know how to solve for the magnitude. Uh, but you can think of it just like a 
or use the Pythagorean theorem, right? So a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where this is a, this is b, and this is c. So if we want c, we would just square root both sides. So the c of the triangle, which is what we want, it would just be the square root of a squared plus b squared. And so we know a and b, so it's really just a matter of plugging it in. So we have a, which was 458.8 squared plus 262.1 squared. So let me go ahead and plug this into my calculator. 262.1 squared plus 458.8 squared. Mm -hmm. And so when you do this, you will get uh, the magnitude, right? So you can just call this f of c, right? Uh, 4c is equal to 528.3. Three, three nine newtons. So you can just round to 528, just like the whole number like they did. Uh, but your magnitude for f of c is 528 newtons, right? So all we did was combine the x and y components, which we found by summing the forces in the x and the y, since we know there's zero, uh, giving us our one variable that we just had to solve for. Keep in mind though, they want magnitude and direction. So the way you get the magnitude is by taking the arc tangent, right? And so what they mean by magnitude is essentially the angle. And so you can write it anyway, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, find this angle here. So I drew it this way, but you can also draw it this way, right? It's just the same exact thing, just written the other side. And the way you can find this angle is by taking the arc tangent of your y component over your x component, right? Because notice tangent is opposite over adjacent, okay? Where opposite is this side, right, which would be your y over your adjacent, which is the x. So hopefully that makes sense where we get that. So you have the arc tangent, right? This is theta, is equal to the arc tangent of your y minus 458.8 over your x 262.1. Keep in mind they're both negative. So plugging this in, we have the arc tangent of 488, or sorry, this is 458, not 488. That's my bad. Um, so we have 458. 0.8 divided by 262.1. Keep in mind the negatives are obviously going to cancel. And so what you'll get is theta here is equal to uh, 60.26, uh, and this is going to be degrees. So what, as I said before, this is this angle theta. So we know this is 60.26 degrees. And so you can write it however you want from any way. They just say the magnitude and direction. Generally, you give it from the x-axis. So you would say 528 newtons, uh, 60.26 degrees uh, below the x-axis, right? And generally, you just label it on your graph, and they'll understand what you mean. Uh, you could also label it from the x-axis, right, this way. Uh, and the way you would just do that is, um, right, you would just subtract 180 from it. Since 180 is this whole distance minus this, so you could give it from this side of the axis, uh, but generally, just label it on your graph there. And uh, yeah, so... Your theta in this case, keep in mind what theta is. Theta is this angle, is that. So your direction, and then your magnitude. So generally, you could draw just a picture. So it would be like this, somewhere like this. So 60.26, and then 528 newtons. So your magnitude and direction. Uh, but yeah, so these are going to be your answers. Just a quick rundown of how we did it. So the first thing to do is just draw it on a graph. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, and then just sum the forces in the x and the y, because I know they add, uh, they add up to zero since we're not moving. Uh, and then I just have my x and y components uh, as my unknowns. Solve for them, combine them using the magnitude formula, and then I get my magnitude. And then I would just take the arc tangent of my y component over my x to get uh, my angle theta or my direction. So yeah, so these are going to be your answers. And uh, yeah, hopefully you found this video useful.